Hello and welcome to this presentation on vapor cycle systems. Today we're going to do an overview of regenerative heating and cogeneration. Hope that you enjoy. Let's start with uh, regenerative vapor power cycles. Uh, regenerative heating uh, is basically a method to reduce the amount of heat required in a steam generator in order to increase its efficiency. Now there are two methods for um, doing this. Basically open and closed feed water systems, which are heat exchangers, can be used to do this. Uh, in the open feed water system, both streams, the hot and the cold stream, are free to mix in direct contact. So it's basically a mixing chamber. Um, and so therefore, in order for that to happen, the pressure of both streams must be the same. Um, and so uh, the since we're going to be extracting steam from an intermediate pressure point within the turbine, that means that we're going to have to pump the condensate out of the condenser at the bottom end of the cycle to a, that intermediate pressure. And then we're going to have to use a second pump to pump the condensate that results from that back to the steam generator. So this particular system is going to require two pumps. Um, whereas in the closed feed water system, both streams are going to remain separate as in a typical uh, shell and tube heat exchanger. And uh, one advantage of that particular setup is that we can do so since the streams are separated and can be at different pressure, we can use a single pump in that system. Now for the purpose of this overview presentation, I'm only going to uh, um, bring some details of analysis about the open feed water uh, regeneration system. But uh, many of the results and method of analysis I'm going to talk about can readily be adapted to the closed uh, regenerative system, closed feed water heater systems. So let's talk about the open feed water heater regenerative uh, systems. So here's a sketch of the system uh, which shows the heat exchanger, the open feed water heater, uh, dash lines at the bottom, and the corresponding TS diagram on the right. And we're going to talk in uh, more detail about each of these components. Um, for the sake of the presentation of this analysis here, we're going to assume that we're dealing with as ideal components as possible. So that's going to start with the turbines and the pumps themselves, which we're going to assume are all isentropic. Um, and so there's no heat transfer between these components and the surroundings. Um, similarly, we're going to assume that the steam generator and the condenser are both operating at constant pressures, namely the high pressure point of the cycle and the low pressure point of the cycle. Uh, of course, down the line, if we're trying to model a system that has real pressure losses, we can incorporate those in the analyses. Uh, but for the time being, let's assume that they're ideal components. We're going to assume that, um, well, we're not, just, not going to assume mixing will occur in the open feed water heater heat exchanger there uh, and because the temperature of the two streams that mix there is uh, going to be uh, uh, separated by a significant uh, a significant amount then that's going to introduce irreversibilities in the process and, um, otherwise we're dealing with an ideal cycle and as far as that heat exchanger itself is concerned we're also going to assume um, that it's uh, in, well insulated from the surroundings so there's no stray heat loss uh, from the, the open feed water heater heat exchanger and its surrounding. It's an, an adiabatic process there. Okay, <clears throat> let's look in the, uh, a little more detail um, at the cycle itself and see why regenerative, uh, the regenerative vapor power cycle um, improves um, efficiency compared to the simple Rankine cycle. So we're going to consider what happens in the regenerative case first, which starts at, uh, in the steam generator, starts at 0.7 and uh, heats the steam up to uh, state 0.1, super superheated steam. When that open feed water system uh, is included in the cycle, it's obvious from, from this illustration that the average uh, average temperature of heat addition between 7 and 1 is higher uh, than it would be between A and 1, A being the point at which water would be delivered to the steam generator if we didn't have the feed water system in place. Uh, and this difference in uh, uh, 
temperature of heat addition in both cycles is the fundamental reason why the efficiency of the uh, regenerative cycle is higher than that of the uh, simple cycle. The average temperature of heat addition is higher. Uh, and if you recall from the uh, cardinal efficiency analysis, the higher that temperature is, the higher the efficiency of cycle will be. Uh, now, what's a little bit less obvious is that we uh, had to lose some steam through the low pressure turbine expansion, two and three on the diagram on the right there, uh, because we extracted a fraction of the mass to go to this heat exchanger, open feed water heater. Um, however, this loss in power produced between two and three uh, is more than offset by the reduction in uh, heat input between seven and one, and that's why the efficiency remains higher. All right, let's um, look in more detail as to uh, what happens to a uh, to the steam as it flows through this regenerative cycle, because now, unlike the simple Rankine cycle, we have a bifurcation of the flow, if you will. So let's start with a unit of mass that would enter the high pressure turbine at, at state point one, and let's call that unit of mass in parenthesis with one. So that unit of mass is gonna enter the turbine at the high pressure point and make it 2.2, at which point it's going to split off a certain mass fraction, Y, to go to the open feed water heater. Now we'll talk in a moment about how we can figure out how much mass ends up going to the heat exchanger. What's left of the steam that first entered the turbine is therefore gonna be one minus Y, uh, and that's the remaining mass fraction that's going to go through the low-pressure turbine, then through the condenser, then through the low-pressure pump, and finally rejoin the hot steam Y in the open feed water heater. Now, of course, by that point, the 1 minus Y fraction of steam originally uh, is now a subcooled liquid, and it's considerably cooler than the steam Y. The effect of that is that it's going to condense that steam Y when they mix in the chamber together, and the mixture, uh, the condensate mixture, is going to pool at state point six, where it's going to enter a second pump to be pumped into the steam generator, which is going to add heat to it and uh, superheat the steam to state point one, closing our cycle, and we're back to where we started. Now, how do we calculate this mass fraction that gets? diverted to the heat exchanger. Well, in a separate video, I will be doing uh, a full energy balance on the open feed water heater um, using conservation of mass and energy. I'm gonna show that that mass fraction is directly related to the enthalpies coming in and out of the, the heat exchanger according to the box equation that's, that's here. So I encourage you to look at that uh, video and see where that comes from. In the meantime, I'm challenging you to actually um, do the derivation yourself, specifically to do it using the integral form of Reynolds transform theorem in its most general form, and see if you can uh, come up with that result with that. Now, with this uh, mass fraction y known uh, with these properties, uh, we can then uh, repeat the mass and energy balance to other components within the cycle and figure out how much work is produced through the turbine per unit mass as a function of the enthalpies and uh, mass flow rate through the turbine, uh, as well as uh, how much work per unit mass is required for the pumps, also as a function of these enthalpies and, and mass flow rate or mass fractions. And similarly, uh, how much heat is being added to the cycle through the steam generator per unit mass and how much heat is uh, rejected uh, at the condenser per unit mass, also as a function of that mass fraction. And those results come readily again from a uh, control volume analyses uh, of each of these individual components. Uh, but the key factor here is to first have figured out uh, what the mass fraction Y is uh, in the first place. Okay, moving on to cogeneration systems. Now, cogeneration systems is not a power uh, cycle system in and of itself, but instead it's a combination of a power plant with uh, the need of a community for hot water or steam uh, in order to provide some cost saving in the generation of both commodities, both the power generated 
and the steam required for heating. Um, these types of processes are widely used uh, in industrial plants and refineries and food processing plants, etc. Uh, anything that requires process steam uh, for heating or other purposes, as well as electricity. It, even though we're talking here in terms of cogeneration using Rankine cycle, it doesn't require uh, Rankine cycle. It, it basically only requires any consistent, uh, relatively high temperature source of heat in order to make this system work. Um, let's talk a little bit more about how that system works uh, in the first place by considering uh, a very simple uh, Rankine cycle setup here uh, with a condenser that now acts as a steam generator for uh, community heating. So the typically the steam for community heating is going to have to be provided uh, at a temperature of at least 100 degrees Celsius, which means that the pressure uh, of delivery of the main turbine at two must uh, must also be at one atmosphere in order for the, its saturated point to also be 100 degrees Celsius. Now that's a lot higher than what we normally would have <clears throat> in a in a dedicated uh, power plant, and it gives us an average uh, temperature of heat rejection for the power cycle that's higher than usual, and, and so therefore we'll expect to get a hit. Um, in the efficiency of the power plant as a result of that. There's two basic setup for cogeneration power plant. The one that we just talked about uh, that looks a lot like the simple Rankine cycle is called a back pressure plant. Back pressure because we're using the low pressure point of the cycle uh, to produce the steam for heating of the community uh, or the industrial process. And again, we're going to expect here a higher uh, temperature of heat rejection in that cycle lower efficiency, uh, but we're hoping, and therefore lower power produced, but uh, the, the goal is that um, this reduction in efficiency and power produced is more than offset by the reduction in cost in producing heating for the, uh, for the industrial plant or the community. A second method, somewhat more sophisticated, uh, involves uh, tapping out some of the steam at an intermediate pressure from the turbine and using it to supply the boiler uh, that, will, that will produce steam or hot water to the community. That uh, expanded steam after it's cooled down, having uh, given off some, some of its energy to the boiler, uh, is then uh, returned to the cycle through an open feed water heater um, in a process very similar to what we have seen before for regenerative heating with an open feed water heater. So that, that uh, steam, once it rejoins the cycle, is then pumped back. The condensate is then pumped back to the steam generator of the cycle, and the whole the whole cycle repeats. This extraction plant has the uh, advantage, singular advantage, compared to the back pressure plant, that the times when the community or the uh, industrial plant does not need steam or hot water, then the tap from the intermediate pressure turbine can be shut off. The fraction Y can be made zero, in other words. Uh, and at that point, all of the steam coming into the turbine at one gets to expand fully to the condenser, to the power cycle condenser, uh, and the entire thing reverts to a simple Rankine cycle. And so therefore, there's no penalty built into the, sim to the system when it's being used as a dedicated power plant at that point. And voila, this is our introduction or overview of uh, cogeneration and regenerative heating. I hope that you enjoyed this presentation. If you did, please hit the like button and feel free to leave me some comments. Take care and until next time.